Welcome you to this seminar. Uh, you are at Sergi, which is a joint uh, research center of uh, the Charles University and Czech Academy of Sciences. And more specifically, uh, you are uh, at the seminar of IDEA, which is a policy-oriented think tank of Sergi. Uh, my name is Martin Serholec, and I'm a researcher uh, at uh, uh, IDEA. Uh, let me first think, uh, thank to uh, the Czech Academy of Sciences, uh, uh, the strategy uh, AVE21, who is funding uh, our IDEA team working on uh, research and development innovation studies. Uh, we are very grateful for the funding. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do any, any of, uh, of our studies and uh, research on this topic. Uh, today's seminar, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, have about two hours. Uh, after my short introduction, uh, the main star of the day is uh, it's Dr. Nemet from, uh, from Hungary. Uh, then we will have uh, two uh, follow-up uh, comments and reflections. Uh, Mr. Uh, President of the Czech Statistical Office, Marek Krojček, was so kind to uh, accept our invitation to comment. And I will add some, uh, some brief comment from the user perspective on the top of that. And then we have some time for, for discussion, uh, general discussion. And after that, there's some refreshment and possibility for informal discussion afterwards. So please don't run away if you don't have to. Uh, after the end, uh, let's have some also debate uh, informally. Uh, afterwards. Uh, before I give the floor uh, to Dr. Nemet, let me uh, make some few introductory remarks to make sure that we are all on the same page of what we are discussing uh, today. Uh, six points. First, uh, we are dealing with access to, to microdata. That means individual data at a personal level or firm level, not aggregated data at the regional level or industrial level or national level that is, uh, after all, regularly accessible uh, on, uh, from the statistical office for, uh, for, for users. This is data that is individual. Because of that, it's confidential data. Uh, access to it is not uh, allowed uh, unless for research uh, purposes. So it's confidential. Not everybody can access it. It's anonymized data. We are not debating access to data which allows direct identification of, of the observations, but it's anonymized. So nobody knows the identity of the individual firm or person in the data. Uh, we talk about statistical data, uh, which in short means that this is data collected under the law of statistics. Uh, which is data that is basically in the house of the statistical office. Uh, we are not talking primarily today about administrative data, uh, which can be very interesting for research purposes, which is conducted by the government for the personal administration. That's a, that's a slightly different topic, rated but different. And we will have another seminar dealing with that problem in about a month ago, uh, in a month, uh, one month future. Today we are dealing with statistical data inside of the statistical office. And of course, uh, we are debating access to it uh, in a safe and controlled environment, uh, and uh, primarily for the purpose of research, possibly, possibly for the purpose of uh, policy analysis. So please keep in mind these six points uh, throughout the two hours uh, presentation debate. This is our topic. Uh, now, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Salt Nemet uh, very briefly. Uh, he has impressive uh, long CV, uh, only the main points. He was a uh, deputy president of the Hungarian Statistical Office for six long years, from 2010 to 2016. And currently he is uh, chief advisor of the president. Uh, I cannot resist uh, to mention that he has degrees in, uh, in law, sociology, urban management, and social geography. So it's a very broad economic interest, and we are very excited to have uh, uh, him as a statistician, but also academic uh, researcher here uh, at our institute. So please, uh, Ms. Dr. Nemet, the floor is yours. Let me move to your presentation and yes, yes, please.
Good afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, thanks for the invitation. It's a, a great time for me. Uh, just a, as a very uh, personal uh, introduction, I'd like to share with you an information that uh, Prague is one of my favorite cities, and uh, uh, several uh, Czech artists are among my personal heroes, right? like uh, Izzy Metzel, or Bohumir Hrabal, or uh, Vera Hitilova, uh, and so on. So nice to be here. Uh, and uh, now I'd like to share with you uh, some information on uh, the operation of the SAFE Center uh, in the Hungarian Center uh, Statistical Office. <coughs> I start uh, from a very uh, uh, a big distance. Uh, we should uh, at first consider what is the work like, uh, what is the world like uh, very recently, and uh, I think. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, this appliance is a bit, bit strange, so uh, I feel like Darth Vader. Uh, and the Empire needs data. Uh, okay, so actually, uh, we, we live uh, in the uh, most complex societies of the uh, human history, and we statisticians, the statisticians have to deal uh, with this situation. And uh, not that the complexity, but the speed of changes uh, are really unbelievable. So, uh, especially if we uh, look at uh, the technologies uh, like storage capacities and, uh, and uh, processing speed. And if we consider uh, these aspects, uh, the storage capacities and uh, uh, processing speed, uh, this is the data revolution, uh, which is uh, mentioned uh, uh, all over the world, that this is the new age. <clears throat> what is like this data revolution? Uh, it's a, already a common sense that uh, we speak uh, about new oil, that data is the new oil uh, in our age. So, and the story is very similar, what happened at the end of the 19th century uh, with uh, mining gold, uh, and the second half of the uh, 20th century with uh, oil. Now the same story will be reproduced uh, with uh, data. And uh, which are the main forms uh, of this new uh, oil? First of all, uh, the big data. Everybody speaks about big data, but what is that big data? Uh, everything is big, big data very recently. So it is featured uh, by at least three and uh, XXXXVs. Uh, we know uh, these uh, definitions very well. I uh, do not want to mention it uh, in details. Then following big data, uh, we have to consider uh, uh, open data. Open data means that uh, data are free, available for, uh, for reusing, analyzing, republishing, sharing, uh, etc. Uh, this, uh, this data. And uh, Martin already uh, mentioned administrative data. This is the third main form uh, of, uh, of the uh, new oil. Uh, the uh, specific features are uh, uh, administered data that uh, those are collected for non-statistical purposes. And uh, it's an intention that uh, it should provide a full uh, coverage, uh, but the method of data collection and uh, data procession is determined uh, by the public administration and, and not by statisticians. It means that uh, uh, the methodology is uh, sometimes uh, uh, not, not proof, uh, and uh, there is a very, uh, very long. Um, uh, there are very long records, uh, but uh, very few variables. Uh, this features uh, mainly the uh, administrative data. <clears throat> And uh, of course, uh, uh, this new oil is uh, uh, extremely interesting uh, for uh, researchers and uh, social scientists. But uh, on the one hand, we are very, uh, 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 very uh, excited and very positive uh, to uh, big data. Uh, and to this new age, uh, which is uh, uh, 
around uh, by, by data. But we have to know that uh, it has also its uh, specific problems. And uh, uh, last fall, uh, Jack Balkin, uh, an American lawyer, published uh, a very interesting uh, paper about the problems of uh, uh, big data. And um, uh, he wrote that uh, uh, our societies uh, entered, the information society entered into a new uh, phase. Uh, which is called algorithmic society. Uh, and uh, this is the most recent phenomena in the world, uh, this uh, algorithmic society. And uh, if we try to understand uh, what is on, uh, then we can say that uh, algorithms are, and uh, artificial intelligence are the machines, and uh, big data is the fuel that, that makes uh, these uh, machines uh, run. Uh, and uh, this algorithmic society is featured uh, by the collection of a waste amount of data on individuals, and uh, it facilitates new forms of, uh, of uh, surveillance, control, discrimination, and uh, manipulation, both by governments and by pri private companies. Uh, this was uh, written last fall, but uh, if you consider uh, uh, the uh, most fresh news uh, from yesterday, uh, the uh, scandal on Facebook and uh, Cambridge uh, Analytica. It's, this is the story. Uh, who owns data? Uh, uh, who can uh, work and deal with data? Uh, and there's a big competition. This is why I mentioned uh, gold miners, uh, because um, uh, very recently, this new phenomena is out of control and out of regulation. And uh, this uh, scandal uh, is uh, just the top of the uh, iceberg. <clears throat> uh, and uh, we have to be uh, aware of the fact that uh, in algorithmic societies, the uh, surveillance and data collection are now widely distributed but uh, there's no guarantee that they will be democratically controlled. Data about many people are collected in many places, but a relatively small number of people have the resource and uh, uh, practical ability to collect, analyze, and use uh, this data. And uh, this is uh, an uh, un uneven uh, uh, opportunity for uh, uh, the majority of the uh, society and uh, the members of the society. And uh, so this, this is a, a, a battle or a fight or a war uh, between private companies uh, and national states uh, on, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on data and uh, who uh, governs uh, with tools of, of uh, algorithmic, algorithmic societies. And uh, the state, while it remains a threat for free expression, and also needs to serve as a necessary counterweight to developing technologies of private control and uh, surveillance. Um, and uh, under these conditions, uh, we have to consider uh, uh, what uh, are the opportunities for state bureaucrats, uh, for statistical offices, and uh, for researchers. But uh, uh, we have to be aware what is uh, around uh, us. Uh, there's another uh, expression. It's the uh, most recent uh, expression, this dataism. Uh, it's invented by uh, uh, Yuval uh, Harari, who is a historian uh, and uh, a kind of celebrity you know, among uh, scientists. <coughs> But uh, he uh, has a very similar opi uh, opinion to Jack Balkin, that dataism declares that the universe consists of data flows and the value of any phenomenon of entity is determined by its contribution to data processing. <clears throat> and as I said, uh, the problem is uh, the, uh, the same as that of uh, big data. The more capable data mining system become, the more business and government agencies can use the systems to spy 
on consumers or citizens in many different ways. So uh, in this room, uh, we are professionals, uh, statisticians, researchers, uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, it's our, uh, uh, we are responsible how to use uh, data. <clears throat> and uh, I can add uh, this last uh, point that uh, uh, very recently adequate institutional and uh, structural uh, responses uh, are not in place. So this is a very recent uh, situation. <clears throat> so uh, as I mentioned, there is a, a battle, and it's a common sense that for for the grass is uh, it's uh, absolutely equal if dinosaurs are fighting or making love uh, for the grass uh, is the <laughs> sorry uh, it is the same <clears throat> and. Uh, no, statisticians are equal uh, to grass uh, in this game, and uh, we can ask questions uh, who are statisticians. It's a very, very popular uh, view uh, about uh, statisticians that are, that are uh, harmless plant eaters or lazy bureaucrats. Uh, but uh, an other uh, approach uh, can be relevant that uh, statistician is a professional calling uh, to tell the public uh, what is the uh, what the world looks like, and uh, I can tell you that uh, I prefer uh, this uh, B uh, point, uh, and uh, I like to uh, make my argumentation in favor of uh, this point. <clears throat> in generally, uh, why do we produce uh, statistical information? <clears throat> because we are bureaucrats and uh, uh, for our salary, yeah? Uh, but on the other hand, so there are some uh, interesting and uh, uh, appreciated uh, quotations here. The uh, first one from Tim Holt. Uh, he was earlier the boss of the uh, British Statistical Office. <clears throat> and uh, he said uh, that independent and uh, high quality statistics are essential for a democratic society. Uh, it's for idea. This is a, a very useful remark, uh, I think. <clears throat> um, a second opinion uh, on statistics. It was said by uh, Janes Potosnik. He's a Slovenian researcher and uh, uh, he is an ex-EU commissioner, and he said that good statistics are uh, much cheaper than bad decisions. This is such an uh, essential sentence uh, about uh, uh, the mission of statistics that uh, Janes Potosnik should be uh, a patrol saint of uh, statisticians uh, after that. <clears throat> And as a third point, uh, I could add that uh, we mustn't forget uh, that uh, statistics are an uh, essential part of the public good. So without uh, high quality, good statistical information, uh, there, aren't, there are no good decisions. So this was statistics uh, uh, in general. Really. And now, uh, what can do official statistics in the age of uh, uh, algorithmic society? <clears throat> uh, in the age of uh, algorithmic society, society, we are the same way responsible for producing uh, high quality statistics on society, economy and environment, just like uh, previously. But the conditions around us are changing. So we have to reflect uh, on these uh, changes. And uh, the very quick changes uh, around us, uh, they contain challenges and opportunities as well. Uh, a few challenges, the changes itself. So if statistics uh, uh, has to reflect on reality, then the changing reality means that statistics uh, has to be able to change uh, the methods uh, and tools and the point of view and so on uh, to be able to uh, reproduce uh, 
uh, relevant uh, information on uh, uh, on society. <clears throat> uh, but not only the world around us is changing, uh, but users' need uh, are changing as well because of the changes of the world. The users don't want uh, to get the same information as uh, ten, 10 years ago. Uh, and I have to tell you that uh, users, at least the uh, top researchers in Hungary, they do not want to see uh, Excel tables any longer. They, they need microdata. Uh, and uh, uh, a third, uh, there are new and powerful competitors in uh, information production. Uh, it's just a very well-known example that, uh, based on big data information in the United States, they are able to produce consumer price index uh, in every hour. It's another question if it makes sense. Uh, do we need an, uh, an uh, hour base uh, producer uh, consumer price index? But it's possible. Uh, and uh, however, they are uh, very powerful competitors. Uh, and uh, officer stati statistics uh, has to uh, react uh, on this uh, uh, situation. But uh, we have uh, opportunities as well. <clears throat> Uh, earlier, I mentioned uh, the speed and storage capacities. It's an uh, advantage as well for us uh, while producing statistical information. Big data, administrative data, open data are new data sources. It's an opportunity uh, as well. Uh, extensively decreasing production costs, very important, uh, because after the last uh, crisis, uh, uh, the budget of statistical offices uh, was cut all over the world uh, and uh, uh, we became much more sensible for production costs uh, and now uh, these uh, costs are decreasing. <clears throat> uh, the activity of big international organizations li like UN, OECD or Eurostat is uh, really supportive. Uh, we are not alone as uh, national statistical offices. Uh, we have uh, uh, LEs uh, all over the world like uh, these uh, organizations. New legal regulation on, uh, on standards of uh, quality assurance, data processing and uh, behavior. Uh, so there's a legal big ground uh, which, is, uh, uh, which contains more and more uh, information uh, and uh, the Euro, uh, European um, uh, Act on Statistics, National Act on Statistics, OECD standards, UN standards, uh, and, and so on. And uh, however, the popularity of evidence-based uh, decision-making uh, is a, a supportive uh, opportunity uh, as well. I don't know uh, what is the Czech situation, but uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's a variety from country to country uh, uh, on uh, the popularity of this evidence-based uh, uh, decision-making. <clears throat> so uh, these are statisticians uh, on the battlefield and uh, uh, we have to find uh, our way how to uh, how to react uh, on the, uh, on the changing situation, and uh, there's an opportunity to make uh, a big step forward. Uh, but uh, uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, there's a very very narrow path that uh, should be found. Uh, I mean, uh, on the one hand, to protect uh, individual uh, data of data providers, and on the other hand, uh, to provide access for researchers, researchers to microdata. And uh, uh, this is an uh, intellectual uh, challenge, uh, how, to, uh, uh, how to meet uh, the both uh, criteria. <clears throat> Uh, because we have to keep in mind as well that officer, statist officer statistics count as an absolutely trust-based business. If data provi providers uh, doesn't trust uh, statistical offices, then it's over, game over. Uh, 
it's re really trust based and uh, <clears throat> This is why uh, everyone uh, uh, has to be absolutely sure that all the collected statistical data can be used exclusively for purposes of uh, statistical analysis. Uh, and these uh, uh, statistical data are not accessible neither for uh, police, uh, for courts, for media, uh, for tax authorities, Nobody can have uh, uh, access to this data uh, because uh, uh, this is a trust. This is a trust-based business, uh, and I can tell you that uh, in my very long career in the uh, Hungarian Statistical Office, uh, I signed a huge amount uh, of letters sent to tax authority, police, and courts, and and, and so on. Uh, to say that no, you don't get uh, individual uh, data on uh, individuals or uh, uh, individual companies, uh, and then they accepted because uh, uh, there's a legal support uh, to this uh, uh, viewpoint. <clears throat> so, uh, after all there's an opportunity for a new type of cooperation between researchers and uh, statistical offices and this is the access to microdata and now we are <laughs> at the point uh, uh, when we speak uh, about uh, microdata so and this is already the hungarian experience that we have different forms of access to microdata uh, the first one is the uh, 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 the access to anonymized microdata sets. Uh, further on, uh, later on, I, I go in details. <clears throat> Second one is uh, remote execution. Uh, third one, remote access. And uh, the fourth one is uh, uh, the core uh, and uh, the machinery, uh, the safe center access, uh, which has already two types uh, in Hungary uh, inside uh, the uh, HCSO's uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, outside of it. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, Jan Nepomucki, why? <clears throat> uh, it's, it's really such a huge uh, accident that uh, uh, um, this statue is standing just in front of the entrance of the Hungarian Central Statistical Office. And it was built in the 30s uh, of the uh, 10th, 20th century when nobody uh, knew about uh, data protection. Uh, but uh, then it was uh, uh, disappeared uh, and a few years ago it was uh, reconstructed. <clears throat> and uh, this is the best symbol of data protection uh, to keep secret. So I think that uh, Jan Napomutsky uh, could be uh, the data uh, uh, hero of data protection, uh, both in uh, Czech Republic and, and in uh, Hungary. And uh, so uh, it's just in front uh, of our entrance. So day after day, uh, we have to remind that data protection. Okay, so which are, uh, how is the regulation uh, of uh, access to anonymized uh, microdata sets? Uh, first of all, uh, this construction is uh, based on a contract. So it's, uh, it, it isn't made by phone or by emails, so we need to sign a contract. Uh, Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, these data sets uh, contain information on obs uh, observation units. Uh, anonymized microdata sets are the form of microdata that have been modified by statistical disclosure control methods in order to reduce to an acceptable level in accordance with current best practices the disclosure risk of statistical units to which they relate. Yeah, it was long, but uh, so anonymized microdata set means that uh, it's already uh, protected. 
uh, uh, researchers can work uh, with uh, uh, individual uh, records, but uh, these records are uh, de-anonymized. Uh, this is uh, a kind of uh, data protection. <clears throat> uh, then, uh, before a uh, researcher gets uh, uh, access to micro data sets, uh, he, uh, he, he, uh, this, this is uh, uh, micro data sets always released with uh, accompanying methodological documentation describing the methodology used during uh, anonymization and their effects on the data set. They are very different methods how to uh, anonymize uh, data sets and researchers uh, uh, have to know how was it done. Uh, to be able to uh, 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 to work uh, with uh, uh, data sets, <clears throat> uh, you know, it uh, can be anonymized by age, uh, by territory, uh, and, uh, and and so on. <clears throat> uh, it's important uh, uh, to mention that uh, these data sets. Uh, exclusively for scientific purposes, uh, not for uh, media debates and scandals uh, to support uh, that uh, he does that and sh uh, she, she does do oh, um, and so on, uh, exclusively for uh, scientific uh, uh, purposes. <clears throat> um, and then uh, very important uh, information, uh, uh, Martin also asked me uh, during the preparations that uh, uh, which data sets are available. Uh, and uh, in our practice, um, uh, all data sets uh, are available, uh, uh, collected uh, by the statistical uh, office. Uh, later on, uh, I go into details uh, how to uh, get an access this, uh, to these uh, data sets. But uh, uh, in fact, uh, everything is uh, available. There's no secret uh, inside the office. Uh, we need a contract and a confidentiality commitment. Uh, this uh, uh, has to be signed for data request, uh, and uh, uh, that's possible that uh, a statistical office might charge for the production of the requested data sets. Uh, because uh, if a researcher need that kind of data, which were never used for uh, scientific purposes, then statistical office uh, has to work, uh, has to, uh, uh, to uh, control the quality and, uh, and time, time series and, and so on, and uh, uh, it uh, costs uh, uh, money. <clears throat> okay. These were in general about uh, access to uh, anonymized data sets, and uh, we have uh, two specific uh, opportunities. The first one is uh, remote uh, execution. Remote uh, execution means that uh, a researcher uh, doesn't go to the safe center. Uh, he or she is sitting uh, at home or uh, at his uh, uh, workstation. And uh, data sets are uh, managed by the uh, statistical office. <clears throat> uh, Remote ex execution means that a uh, researcher uh, gets uh, uh, um, uh, information on, uh, on data sets. He or she prepares uh, syntax files, sends to the statistical office. The statistical office uh, runs uh, the syntax files and sends uh, back uh, the results to uh, researcher by uh, mail. Uh, this is the theory, uh, but uh, to be frank, uh, very recently it, uh, it doesn't work uh, properly. Uh, it's uh, 
too much uh, opportunity uh, for mistakes uh, in this uh, system. Uh, I think that this is a, a very useful tool, but uh, we have to invest still a lot uh, in to manage uh, this uh, opportunity. <clears throat> As you see in uh, uh, last year, there were only two outputs uh, produced uh, uh, in remote execution. Uh, the next form is uh, remote access. <clears throat> uh, remote access uh, provides, uh, in fact, uh, the same service for the researchers uh, as the Safe Center. And uh, very recently, uh, we have uh, one remote access uh, opportunity. This is still inside uh, the statistical offices infrastructure, but uh, outside of Budapest. Uh, uh, this uh, remote uh, access opportunity uh, works in uh, the second office of the statistical office. And uh, uh, there are the same uh, uh, rules and procedures as in the safe center in Budapest. And there is an online access. So we have an office in uh, Szeged, in the city of Szeged. Uh, there's a big university in the city. This is why uh, we invented uh, this remote access uh, uh, environment uh, in our Szeged office. The utilization is uh, quite low. Uh, and uh, last year we had uh, six uh, research projects uh, in this uh, remote access uh, 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 network. <clears throat> there are two workstations in, in Szeged. And now uh, about uh, safe center access which are the general rules of uh, safe center. <clears throat> uh, as I already mentioned, uh, uh, data sets are only for scientific purposes, representing uh, the protection of individual statistical data and the data protection regulations. Uh, and um, in the safe center researchers uh, access data sets which are prepared for research in a safe uh, environment and uh, with uh, CCTV uh, surveillance uh, system in place. So it's uh, really not a joy. You are permanently controlled uh, by, by uh, cameras, uh, but uh, Please believe me, it makes sense. So we experienced uh, uh, some uh, 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 violations. So this is a very useful tool, the CCTV surveillance. Uh, which data sets are in the safe center? <clears throat> there are standard uh, data sets pre prepared for research, already there, uh, accessible. Uh, and then, as I already mentioned, mentioned we prepare uh, data, set, data sets uh, which uh, are uh, specific data sets for a request. Okay, so standard data, set, data sets, data sets uh, for uh, request, and these are from uh, uh, statistical uh, offices. Uh, 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 data uh, sets. And uh, there are two other uh, opportunities. Uh, the first one, these are the linked data sets. If we link uh, different data sets, uh, then it's a third type, it's a new one. Uh, and uh, there's a, uh, it's also possible uh, to bring external data sets into the safe center. Uh, later on, I will mention uh, examples uh, on uh, on this. But uh, if a research project uh, needs uh, external data sets, uh, these data sets uh, has to be uh, uh, checked. Uh, uh, it, it, it is called input checking. Uh, it's a procedure where uh, we control if uh, they are... Uh, uh, so 
it has to be anonymized uh, and so on and so on uh, to meet the same standards as statistical offices uh, data sets. So these are the standard data sets uh, in the safe center. Typically, uh, these are social statistical uh, data sets. Uh, there's a, a, a big need uh, for, for these uh, data sets. Uh, especially the labor force survey is uh, very frequently used. Uh, researchers like it uh, very much. Uh, uh, and uh, so you see uh, these data sets are already prepared for uh, research purposes. Then about the other data sets, <coughs> uh, sp specific data sets can be requested for a fee. So th there's a, there's a uh, lot to do with uh, data sets. Uh, but on the one hand, uh, statistical offices and statisticians uh, can uh, hate uh, safe center because uh, they, uh, they have to work on statistical data sets. But on the other hand, uh, uh, this is very good for data quality. So uh, we uh, have to uh, harmonize uh, time series and uh, to know where are breaks in time series uh, and so on and so on. So uh, it supports uh, really much uh, the data quality. <clears throat> uh, and th there are some examples uh, what kind of data sets uh, are available for a fee. And as I mentioned, there are linked and uh, external uh, data sets uh, as well. This is just an example of uh, uh, what kind of firm level data sets are available, because I mentioned that in generally all kinds of data sets are available. Uh, these are just uh, examples with uh, the length of uh, time series uh, of these data sets. Uh, okay, so researchers uh, are usually in hurry. Uh, they would like just uh, use uh, data sets, but uh, they get uh, a huge amount of additional uh, information of uh, these data sets. Uh, for example, uh, for a, there is a general guideline uh, for researchers. Then uh, we prepare, prepared uh, methodological guidelines, information on data collection, questionnaires, inc including the name of variables. Uh, then uh, researcher gets uh, all the uh, related uh, statistical uh, publications. Then list of variables in the files indicating the exact name, measure, number of the questions on the questionnaire to which uh, the variable contains uh, the answer. So, uh, uh, researchers have uh, the opportunity to, to go in depth and to know everything uh, about uh, the data set. So, it's uh, not the uh, old fashioned and uh, old type uh, service when uh, statistical yearbooks uh, uh, contained uh, the most uh, relevant uh, information. and. Uh, uh, there were some tables and uh, uh, we tried to figure out uh, what is like uh, the world and the society. So uh, researchers get in-depth information. Uh, they know everything uh, about the data they want to use, <coughs> including the labels and, and, and so on. Uh, about the safe center, so uh, you can see uh, uh, which kind of software softwares are used in the safe center. Uh, uh, we are very recently uh, working on statistical uh, R uh, uh, pr program, how to uh, add uh, the use of R. Uh, to these uh, tools, but uh, it's it's a, a difficult problem. So I, I don't want to go in, uh, in details, but uh, it's still open. <clears throat> uh, uh, a long list contains uh, things. Uh, what is forbidden uh, in the safe center? Everything is forbidden. So. Uh, 
you can see it in front of uh, your uh, screen and to work uh, on uh, uh, and, and typing and, and, and so on. Uh, everything else uh, is uh, for, forbidden. Uh, and researchers cannot take uh, phones, uh, iPads and so on into the safe center. We have lockers uh, in, in front of the uh, safe center and they can store uh, all their, their, their things uh, outside and to go inside uh, just uh, in, in, with uh, empty hands. This is how the safe center uh, looks like. It's uh, quite puritan. <laughs> Uh, researchers are working and uh, they have some research uh, results. Uh, what is the procedure when they have uh, some results? Uh, this is the essence uh, of the safe center. So uh, every research uh, result uh, uh, has to uh, checked in a process called output checking. Uh, researchers uh, 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 aren't uh, connected to the wor uh, world outside. Uh, they communicate exclusively uh, with the IT system of the safe center. So they save uh, the research outputs uh, on the server, on the dedicated uh, part of the server. Uh, statisticians uh, can, they have access uh, to this saved uh, result and uh, uh, and then they check uh, from uh, data protection point of view uh, these uh, uh, results. Uh, and uh, if there aren't uh, 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 disclosure problems uh, in the saved uh, tables or graphs or uh, anything, I, later on I show you uh, what kind of outputs uh, are, then uh, by mail, they send to researcher uh, the result. And uh, so uh, this is the uh, procedure. <clears throat> uh, very recently, uh, the data sets uh, which are already prepared for uh, research and uh, 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 they, are, uh, they uh, can be researched uh, free of charge, free of charge. Uh, in this case, the output checking is also free of charge. But uh, at this point, uh, we think that this policy should be uh, reconsidered because uh, there's really a lot of work uh, with output checking. Uh, three years ago, uh, one colleague uh, made uh, in my office the output checking. Now we have a department. So uh, very rapid extension uh, of, uh, of the uh, bureaucracy, uh, which is built on uh, output checking and it, it costs uh, money. Some figures uh, about uh, the safe center, as you see, it started in 2009 with one research project. Uh, it was uh, still in 2010 and then it was doubled uh, in 2011. And then uh, a rapid uh, increase in uh, research projects. And uh, from 2014, uh, uh, we can follow the researches. Our most important uh, partner, this is the uh, Center for Economic and Regional Studies of the Hungarian Academy of, uh, of Scientists. This is uh, the relevant institution to uh, Sergi uh, in, in your uh, case. And uh, as you see, so uh, they have more and more research projects uh, in the safe center. And uh, here on the right side, uh, you see the number of uh, output checkings. And uh, so we started with five, uh, uh, 27, uh, 48. But uh, no, it's impossible uh, to deal with uh, this amount of uh, output checkings with one person. This is why we have already a uh, department for it. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, this is just an example uh, for uh, pricing uh, of uh, output checking. Uh, details are uh, not really uh, interesting, uh, but uh, the process, <coughs> how it was worked out, it's interesting because uh, at the beginning uh, we set a price uh, and uh, that, that was uh, 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 the price. And our main partner said that, uh, OK, but uh, it's the same price if I uh, try to get uh, one output, which is uh, just an Excel uh, table. And it's the same if I have 20. And they were right. So we had long negotiations. Uh, and uh, this is the final result. Uh, we compromised uh, how to price. Uh, the outputs. Uh, so uh, we are ready uh, to follow the changing uh, needs of researchers. And since uh, 2015, uh, we operate de facto two uh, research rooms, one for uh, SARS, and uh, and the basic one <clears throat> because uh, they had uh, a certain amount of uh, money and they invested uh, in IT facilities and these IT facilities uh, were uh, uh, integrated into the uh, st statistical offices uh, IT infrastructure, but uh, they were owned uh, by the research institution, and uh, they uh, were uh, uh, they, they used uh, these uh, uh, IT uh, facilities. The other researchers used uh, uh, statistical offices uh, IT uh, infrastructure. And uh, now uh, we made in February uh, a jump, uh, a jump to uh, a completely new terrain, uh, which means that uh, Hungarian Academy of Science is invested into a new science building in in Budapest, and two research institutions, uh, Center for Social Sciences and the uh, Center for Economic and uh, Regional Studies are located in this new building. And uh, CERS initiated negotiations with the Statistical Office about a safe center in this new science building. And uh, so in February, this uh, safe center was opened and uh, researchers uh, are using this uh, new safe center outside the uh, statistical offices uh, infra infrastructure. Um, uh, we signed a contract uh, on this uh, research, uh, center, research center and um, uh, all the details uh, have to uh, uh, elaborate it. It was a very long process and uh, we didn't have uh, really good examples and we didn't have a know-how uh, how to make it. Uh, we have to negotiate with uh, each other and, and to find uh, the best uh, solutions. Uh, but since February, uh, it's uh, already uh, operating. Uh, and we took care on uh, data protection in uh, three chief areas. There's a legal protection, there's a physical protection, and there's an IT uh, protection. Uh, and uh, the very new uh, solution is that uh, Statistical Office and uh, SARS uh, operate jointly this safe center. So this is completely new in our life, uh, but uh, everyone is happy uh, with this uh, uh, new facility. Uh, OK. Thank you. So which are the main duties uh, of the statistical office? Uh, to ensure the necessary storage capacity and perform a nice save on jobs completely completed during the day, submit IDs and passwords uh, for researchers, uh, uh, provide the necessary softwares, uh, and so on. 
Um, but we have a very long list. These are only examples uh, from the contract. Uh, which are the duties of uh, SARS. Uh, they have to inform researchers about the regulation uh, of the safe center. They have to ensure, uh, ensure that non-authorized persons do not enter uh, the safe center. They uh, uh, organize and control the daily operation of the safe, safe center uh, and regularly inform the statistical office Statistical office uh, have the right uh, to control any time uh, what is on, uh, what is going on in the uh, safe center. There are uh, uh, 14 cameras uh, in the safe center. There are 12 workstations. Every workstation is observed with one camera, and two cameras uh, are. Uh, 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 they, they have uh, a wide range uh, picture uh, on the room. Uh, and uh, these pictures are controlled uh, both in uh, the new science building of the, of the academy and in the statistical office. Uh, there's an online connection uh, between uh, uh, cameras and, uh, and these institutions. So there's a permanent uh, control uh, in the uh, safe center. It was a, a really big question how to ensure uh, the safety. And at, at, at first, we thought about uh, 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 people who are sitting there and uh, controlling the researchers, but nobody had uh, the budget and opportunity uh, to employ uh, that, that people. This, people, this is why we moved towards uh, the IT uh, control. Something about the costs. <clears throat> uh, in the framework of this uh, new research uh, center, uh, so there are the annual costs are so about uh, 30,000 uh, euros for the academy. Uh, which covers uh, updating uh, the data sets every year. So, you know, there is a time series, so, and it has to be updated uh, year after year. Uh, IT operation costs, supervision uh, of security, output checking, uh, and so on. But this is a, a, a basic uh, a cost, and uh, a statistical office and uh, a research institution are following uh, 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 the uh, operation of the safe center. And uh, for example, when uh, output checking costs are running out, uh, then we give a sign and uh, they invest again into output checking. Uh, this is a safe center in the science building and a CCTV uh, surveillance uh, system. Uh, I have uh, a dozen of slides on uh, research results, uh, but uh, no, I, uh, I, I think I jump. Uh, and I jump to uh, conclusion. But I, I mentioned what kind of results are. So there's a result on innovation and within firm wage uh, inequalities, where uh, they linked uh, uh, external data sets uh, in the safe center, and uh, there are very remarkable research uh, results. Uh, another example, it's called uh, GEO, this research project. And uh, uh, the basic data set is the census uh, tracked uh, uh, information of the uh, last population census. Every census tract have uh, 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 a GEO code. And based on this uh, geocode, uh, researchers try to uh, modeling the accessibility of uh, labor market. So it's a very policy relevant uh, research. A third one, uh, 
uh, in the Hungarian society, uh, the integration of uh, uh, Roma uh, uh, minorities is a real, really relevant problem. So there is a research on health differences at birth between Roma and non-Roma children in Hungary. And uh, it means that they uh, connected uh, uh, two data sets, the birth records as an administrative data uh, from uh, 1981 and uh, the data set of uh, last uh, population census. And they try to follow uh, the health and uh, uh, and uh, uh, performance of uh, of children uh, with uh, Roma or non-Roma uh, ethnic background. Something about uh, the possible future. <clears throat> so Eurostat has uh, a project. It's called uh, Dara. Decentralized and remote access to confidential data in uh, ESS. Uh, the project is uh, very recently in in a experimental phase. Uh, Hungarian Central Statistical Office uh, uh, took part uh, in this uh, project. <clears throat> so you see the project partners, and uh, this is the. Uh, a basic plan how to make uh, interconnect, uh, interconnected linkage uh, between safe centers in different countries. So to make possible that researchers uh, uh, don't have to travel to Luxembourg uh, to have mm -hmm. an access to uh, European uh, micro data sets, but uh, via this network, uh, these European micro data sets uh, could be available for uh, researchers. Uh, yes, this is, uh, uh, this was about Dara. Some closing remarks. Uh, which are the benefits of using uh, micro data? <clears throat> Uh, it's my personal view that uh, uh, by using microdata, the world appears in a completely new perspective. Uh, I can compare it uh, to uh, using a microscope for, for biologists or for using uh, radio telescopes for uh, astronomists. Uh, the world uh, uh, is a, uh, just in a uh, new perspective uh, as it appears. <clears throat> uh, I have to mention, I'm sorry for it, uh, but uh, to provide uh, access to microdata is a kind of legal duty for statistical offices. Uh, the European Statistics uh, Code of Practice and the National uh, uh, Code of Practices uh, uh, they prescribe for statisticians uh, to support uh, this kind of uh, uh, access to microdata. <clears throat> uh, there's a quotation. This is the mission of the European statistical system that we provide the European Union, the world uh, and the public with independent high quality information on the economy uh, and society on European national and regional levels and make the information available to everyone for decision-making purposes, research uh, and debate. And uh, still one quotation from the regulation on European statistics. Uh, in order to align concepts and uh, methodologies in statistics and adequate interdisciplinary cooperation with academic institutions should be developed. So, uh, I think that, uh, as I started, we are in a completely new age, and this new age is about cooperation. Uh, the traditional picture uh, about the scientist who is uh, sitting alone uh, at the uh, uh, workstation and uh, thinking alone is obsolete. So the world is so complex uh, that uh, we have to work together uh, researchers, statisticians, and, and so on. 
uh, one argument uh, for safe centers that uh, for statistical office or at least for the Hungarian statistical office is a uh, profitable uh, 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 thing. And uh, last but not least, uh, microdata and safe centers are relevant tools for uh, policy uh, evaluations. There is a lot of examples uh, how to use for policy evaluation uh, the uh, access uh, to microdata. Some difficulties. Uh, I think that uh, uh, some of you are already raised the question, uh, do statisticians like uh, the safe center? Uh, uh, I have to tell you that not really, uh, because it, it's an extra work. You know, the most of my colleagues are bureaucrats. Uh, they are working for a certain uh, uh, salary, and uh, if they uh, uh, work much more uh, in order to operate the safe center, the salary is still the same. So this is a problem. But some colleagues are uh, really committed uh, to, uh, to build a safe center, to search for new opportunities, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, a certain culture change would be desirable in how statisticians perceive the importance uh, of their profession. Uh, we need an innovative approach. Uh, we need uh, uh, proactive uh, behavior, a cooperation and even more cooperation, and uh, a commitment to producing useful, relevant, and high quality statistics. And uh, just as a conclusion, uh, I like to summarize uh, from the very beginning uh, to this point uh, my views that I think that a transparent and properly regulated use of microdata in safe centers should become best practice and a relevant answer to the challenges of data revolution and algorithmic societies. And as I started, so there's a big debate uh, who and how can deal uh, with uh, the new oil and uh, the safe center and the, this kind of approach and this way of thinking uh, could be uh, very useful to find uh, the solution. Thanks a lot uh, for your patience and uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for excellent presentation. Uh, let me now uh, move to Mr. President Rojcik and ask him for a few comments. Do you need a microphone or you can do without? Okay. I speak quite a lot. also interesting for us because sharing experience <laughs> because sharing experience is always very useful not only for statisticians but especially for statisticians uh, uh, the discussion about providing microdata is uh, a question which we also meet uh, we uh, discussed quite intensively uh, especially last year following the uh, recommendation which we had from the uh, peer review, which is uh, which is some kind of uh, uh, external audit uh, based on EU uh, some EU rules, uh, which is uh, focused especially on institutional quality, uh, institutional environment, and and uh, various quality aspects of of the uh, statistical. Uh, offices and one of the recommendation was uh, to uh, to look uh, if uh, there could be some uh, space for improvement for providing microdata for uh, for research purposes and uh, based on this uh, we uh, we uh, uh, realized uh, a kind of survey 
among uh, research academic institutions, uh, uh, universities and so on. Uh, there were together 57 institutions uh, requested or surveyed and uh, uh, we get uh, uh, something like 27 replies. Uh, and uh, we ask various questions, uh, and uh, one of these was if uh, they see uh, the need uh, uh, for improving the uh, way we provide them the microdata. And uh, 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 there were various possibilities, this remote access and uh, safe center and so on. And uh, the aggregate... Uh, Mm, uh, result of this survey was that there is no urgent need for uh, changing the way uh, we provided microdata. Of course, there were some replies that it could be useful to have uh, some kind of safe center or remote access, uh, but uh, um, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, didn't uh, uh, um, reflect it that there is really urgent need. Uh, what's the situation uh, now? Now is the situation that we uh, mostly provide uh, the microdata for research purposes based on some contract and uh, according to law uh, uh, via, via uh, some kind of uh, secured cloud uh, and uh, the uh, um, authorized uh, persons from the institutions get some 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 uh, uh, access uh, access uh, um, uh, um, data some 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 passwords and so on uh, and they can uh, download the data from this from this cloud but of course uh, and and a few years ago we used mostly some CDs DVDs but now we use more this 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 uh, kind of of providing data which I think. Uh, 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 was appreciated by them because it's some kind of improvement, of course. Uh, but of course, this is not uh, the uh, way which is uh, uh, which is which is uh, which enables uh, a, a more uh, efficient uh, work with the data, uh, like the safe center. Uh, of course, the 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 way we uh, today provide the data uh, doesn't enable to. Uh, linked the data because uh, they they have of, of course anonymized and uh, they they don't have the possibility to link them. Uh, so uh, I think Safe Center is interesting. Uh, um, uh, um, it, it, it's 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 interesting option uh, for that. Uh, it's uh, for us very useful uh, very useful to see the experience. Uh, uh, to hear the experience uh, of of Hungarian colleagues, uh, I uh, before this 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 workshop, I talked to Dr. Neman, and we talked that it could be interesting for us to see uh, see 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 uh, how it works at uh, um, at, at, at the, the, the office, and uh, I uh, I plan that uh, uh, when I will have the uh, visit in Hungarian statistics office, I. Uh, I would like, and I will be very glad to 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 see it, to have uh, possibility to see how how it works in reality. Of course, uh, this is not so easy, and uh, it was mentioned here that uh, there are some costs, of course, and uh, we also calculated some rough estimation. Of course, it was about some I don't know two millions of crowns or something for creating the safe center investment into uh, some physical uh, place and some computers and. Uh, uh, software and uh, and of course people you must pay some people uh, which uh, which um, uh, uh, are responsible for 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 checking if the confidentiality is 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 uh, uh, for confidentiality rules are are followed and so on so uh, this is also something which is not easy because uh, uh, this um, qualification uh, which we need uh, from these people is quite high because this is not only someone who who, who are, is sitting and looking if uh, uh, but but he must work then with the data output and to be able to uh, consider if everything is okay and so on and uh, this is something which i see maybe as the 
uh, most problematic uh, <coughs> feature of, of, of this. Uh, so uh, for that time, we, we close it that there is no ur urgent need. Uh, but of course, it's a question which is open to the future, I think. And uh, uh, we, will, we will in the next month discuss uh, generally about the policy of providing data uh, about the fees which which we uh, we 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 need for for uh, for creating data sets and and one of the questions we will discuss is also the uh, if if uh, there is uh, really some some um, if, if 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 we will think into the future for for uh, creating the safe center and. Uh, uh, and I think the international uh, international uh, experience or experience from other countries is very useful in this in this aspect. So this is from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Let me add a few more comments uh, by myself. I will speak mainly uh, from the user perspective. So I, I borrowed uh, the analogy from uh, from uh, Dr. Nemet about the telescope, and I really think uh, uh, for for social scientists, uh, microdata is like Hubble telescope for astronomers. Uh, the microscope for biologists is also a good analogy uh, in that sense. It's really I mean see difference to use aggregated data and then be able to look actually at the, at the microdata at the other like micro evidence. It makes a difference. Everybody marvels on the night sky. Uh, it, it's fine. You can uh, get philosophical and all that. But if you want to go deeper into how the universe works, you need a Hubble. You need to see what's on the uh, right hand side. Uh, it's, 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 this is massive, a massive simplification, of course. But uh, but uh, going back uh, back to Earth, using aggregated data at the, at the industry level, or regional level, or national level. It's fine for many research questions, and there have been it's a long tradition of research on aggregated data. But uh, when one deals with questions that operate at the micro level, mechanisms, when it comes to labor market, when it comes to uh, analysis of government subsidies of varying kinds, when the mechanisms are actually at the micro level working, then it's quite tricky to use the aggregated data. Because every aggregation is a loss of information. It's a loss of variability, and it's variability that can be crucial for identifying the actually impact that we are up to uh, measuring. And there is a even a uh, term developed in, uh, in uh, uh, econometrics, which, which is called ecological, ecological fallacy, which is when we infer from uh, relationships observed at the aggregated level on what happens at the micro level. And it's been shown might many times that it's tricky and there can be misleading conclusions and then misleading policy implications. So I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have the Hubble to get to the right conclusions. Uh, few uh, few quick points. Uh, first is to emphasize the merging, the importance of merging, merging and merging of data. Uh, the world is complex, uh, the models are complex, and to get to actually nailing down the effect that we are up to, we usually need a quite vast array of evidence variables to include into the model. Uh, so uh, my favorite topic uh, is the evaluation of uh, R&D subsidies to firms. One needs balance sheet and income statements data for the firms, data on employment, uh, data from the business register, of course, from R&D surveys, and then uh, data ab about uh, the, the, the subsidies from the information system of, uh, of R&D. And merge all of these at the firm level. And preferably, and almost necessarily, actually, to get also a time series of the data. Then I'm able to get somehow reasonably close to estimate some effect that I could be confident with a still possible list of caveats, but some number that I think could be close to getting uh, what I need. If I don't have one source of the data, if I couldn't merge it, if I don't know uh, the balance sheets uh, data, how the firm was productive, uh, the solvency ratio or things like that, 
I cannot really uh, get to the uh, point. I can estimate some coefficient, but with so much bias uh, over or under that a real econometrician who would look at the data and the result would just laugh on me. So it's important to merge data and have the possibility of merging data from various sources and have a time series. So merge over time and cross-sectionally. Uh, anonymization, uh, uh, it's my ex experience that's important to uh, emphasize the difference between indirect and direct possibility for identification. Uh, uh, the EU uh, framework is emphasizing that data should be provided only that allow for indirect identification. So it's fine to allow for indirect identification. Uh, the Czech Statistical Office, uh, uh, I'm sorry for the Czech, but it's saying that sh what shouldn't be allowed is a direct identification. Uh, and it's important to keep in mind that indirect identification is generally fine. That's not a prohibited problem to not allow access to microdata. Uh, there are some sensitive special cases if there is company in automotive, in Mlada Boleslav, large, you can probably identify. Uh, uh, you shouldn't do it, right? That's not the purpose of the analysis, all right? Uh, but these firms can be, if it's sensitive, these can, firms can be excluded from the data if there are some special cases. But this is not a general argument for excluding access to the microdata, because then none of this in anywhere in the world could work. Because just judging for a few items like this, for few variables, you can identify so many. If you try, you must not. That's the purpose, right? You must not do it. And you don't need it to use the data, right? But the possibility of indirect identification, that's actually fine, generally. Uh, then my own experience, uh, I used, uh, of course, the Czech data, uh, which is I would, what I would call distributed microdata, which is sent to the uh, uh, researcher on a, on a CD-ROM or now uh, through, through internet. So the researcher gets the data in his own computer and can, can work with it. Uh, similarly, from Statistics Norway, I got the similar data. This is, of course, anonymized. Uh, Statistics Norway, uh, uh, still 10 years ago, I think, was giving even non-anonymized data to researchers. Uh, which is Scandinavia, but they, they didn't lock their doors. They don't do it anymore, but, uh, but they did it, actually. Uh, not recommended to do. <coughs> then uh, the safe room. Uh, as in Hungary, uh, there is one in the UK. Uh, it's called Virtual Microdata Laboratory at the Office of National Statistics in the UK. Today, I checked in the afternoon, and they have more than 2,000 now registered research projects in their virtual data laboratory in the UK. Uh, I didn't have to only sign, uh, of course, the Pledge of Secrecy and all that, but it was half-day training uh, of the legal framework of how I can use and cannot use the data, and at the end of it, I had to pass actually a test, so I, I understood correctly what I can and cannot do. This is important, right? This is not for everybody. It's for people who are uh, educated to use the data and who know how to do it, and they have to be under, uh, under surveillance and under strict conditions and follow strict code of conduct. Absolutely. And it's everywhere. So this is for granted. Uh, then there is remote access. Uh, when I was in Sweden, uh, at the uh, University of Lund, uh, we got access to a system called MONA, in Statistics of Sweden, which is perhaps maybe the most advanced in the world. And uh, remote access means that actually the server is in the Statistics of Sweden, but uh, everybody gets a, a code or so there was a small uh, like a box at that point uh, that allows connecting through a sort of, kind of VPN, remote access connection, through uh, uh, his or her own computer. So I could have worked on the server of the Statistical Office Sweden here in my office in, in Sergii and do all the analysis uh, I, 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 I desired. The data, of course, never left Statistics Sweden, but I could run the programs and compute here, you know, uh, at, or at home, you know, in a cafeteria or whatever. This is, of course, very convenient. Uh, for the researcher, it's a little bit scaling back the, secre uh, the secrecy and the confidential and uh, security, uh, of course. So it's uh, that's a little bit more tricky, uh, but it's, it's the cutting gauge, I would say, of uh, microdata access. And then we have our own Sergii data lab, which I'm administrating here. Uh, 
and which is modeled uh, 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 as the safe room in, in, in VML uh, in, uh, in UK. Uh, then, of course, there is safe center in Eurostat. Uh, there are safe centers or remote access, at least in Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, France. And uh, this is what I know many other countries, uh, which I don't know. Uh, so this is not something special, really. It's uh, something that is well established and routinized and working in many, many countries. It's now in Hungary for many years. Uh, no offense against Hungary, but if Hungary can do it, come on. <laughs> So, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the actually advantage and challenge? Uh, uh, there has been already some points on this, so I will get quickly through it. Uh, and mainly for a statistical office, actually. Uh, I would say security, security, security. It's far more secure to have the data in-house, the data never leaves the server of statistical office, than handling it to researchers, allowing them to download it and move with it freely, right? You, you see, at any moment, what happens with the data, what kind of calculations are done, by who, you can, uh, uh, you, you have a perfect oversight on, on the access, who is working with the data. Uh, so it's, it's far more secure, actually, to have this framework than handling the data uh, outside. Uh, uh, Sesco Office has oversight of, of the impacts of the results, because it has to go through the result checking, so you actually know how it's used and what are the fruits bearing from this system. Uh, the data is harmonized, updated at any point in time, the same data at the server, right? So there's only one version of the data set. Uh, there's not different uh, uh, versions of the data sent uh, at this point to different kind of researchers, so it's actually quite uh, 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 quite uh, more modern in that sense. There are huge scale economies for cleaning and merging the data because now the, every researcher has to clean and merge the data by itself. If it's in one space, there could be panel data sets merged, you know, that are used, overused, and uh, again and again. And after all, researchers are mostly pub, uh, paid by public money. So uh, it's another saving of public money. So res every researcher doesn't do it repeatedly himself, but it's done just once. Uh, of course, the SIG office then provides extra value added to the public. The, the data that is collected, it's immense amount of data, uh, is produced for um, uh, use for projection statistical tables and the, 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 uh, the default outputs. And now that's another big possible value added on the top of that, serving the society. <laughs> Uh, and the government as well. And uh, of course, then I would also mention prestige as the uh, statistical office that is modern and, uh, you know, keeping with time and with the algorithmic society. Uh, uh, challenges, uh, of course, a small detail of, of the cost. Uh, initial investment about the maintenance cost, but, th but there can be fees. Uh, uh, there can be funding for infrastructure for setting up the office. Uh, so when there is a decision to do it, I would say that uh, the funding question could be difficult, but maybe not that difficult. It has to be seen. Uh, there could be legal barriers, which I'm not a lawyer, but there could be some, uh, some uh, culture change already has been mentioned, uh, the opening of the mind of, uh, that this is actually the way the data should be used. And uh, it's more secure, but there are still security threats. Uh, but if we are in 21st century, we are accessing our accounts in the banks online, so I'm sure there is a solution that uh, uh, could work, and uh, after all, um, the safe center doesn't have to be connected to the network, right? It can be unplugged, actually, so it doesn't have to be a threat from a hacker from Russia. Uh, only when the data is updated, maybe, you know, but it doesn't have to be on the network. It can be a secure, disconnected, you know, set of computers without any access from outside, from, from, from the world. Uh, one question important, I think, is whether data sh the data should be strictly accessible only for science or research, or whether it should be available also for evaluation purposes. Uh, this is uh, up for debate. Uh, uh, I would just add that according to current leg legislation, it must be just for science and research. Uh, but of course, uh, the value for society is exactly in the policy research, a policy evaluation, and evidence-based policies that this can guide. So um, some solution that would allow evidence-based policy support would be more favorable and would add value 
to, to use of a Saint Center. But I see this could be sensitive, but uh, it's actually one uh, major pro uh, running a, a safe center. Uh, then who exactly the question, what is the demand, right? So let me finish with this Easter uh, theme. Uh, I think this is the classical chicken or egg problem, right? Uh, without a safe center, there will not be uh, analysis. And without analysis, there will not be evidence and there will not be evidence policy. And without evidence, evidence there will not be demand for further evidence policy. So. Uh, we have to start somewhere, right? Uh, it took in, in Hungary, it took three years to get to more than two research projects, so three years, right? So the start, it was slow, and then it was 20, 30, now, uh, I don't know how many. So uh, it's really, uh, you know, chicken and egg, uh, in, my, uh, in my view. Uh, and of course, I don't want to uh, advocate for establishing a research center, a size critical office for millions. And then the only one who is coming there is Martin Serholetz running analysis. That would be stupid, of course. Right? So we need to be careful, but um, I'm cautiously optimistic because uh, it works in so many other countries and there is demand. Uh, maybe the, the demand is latent now. Maybe it will take a couple of years to get it through and get the people uh, familiar and start going. But if it works elsewhere, it will work here uh, as well. Uh, and only on the last point, uh, you, you go to the leaflets, but uh, save the date for the next uh, seminar, which will actually look at the administrative data uh, access for research purposes. In a month from now, uh, we will send an official poster in about a week. But uh, consider uh, coming, that will be also a very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Thank you. And uh, uh, let me maybe, if you want to, uh, Mr. Nemet, uh, would you like to add to our uh, yes. first uh, um, uh, comments and then uh, we will open the floor. Oh. So, thank you very much. Um, I'm really happy to hear that uh, I think that we speak more or less the same language. We have the same ideas. This is uh, very important. And uh, I'd like to focus on this uh, chicken egg uh, problem. And uh, uh, I'd like to share with you with my, my uh, own uh, experience. So about uh, six years ago, uh, I thought that uh, that kind of uh, empirical researches uh, uh, which were going on in Hungary, uh, they are, they are uh, uh, completely obsolete. Uh, there are lots of universities. Uh, every university has uh, this and that kind of departments, and uh, they are running for money and uh, to make researches. They get a little amount of money. This is why they make little researches, and the result is uh, even more uh, small. Uh, and uh, so about uh, 2012, uh, I organized, uh, uh, how to call it, it was a road show. Uh, I traveled around uh, all the universities with my colleagues. We made presentations, which kind of data sets are available in statistical uh, office. And I tried to convince researchers that uh, please forget uh, this uh, department uh, scale researches that uh, I uh, take a sample for uh, 130 persons and then I analyze uh, it. It's, it's nothing. Uh, the world is running into another direction. Please use uh, the data sets of the statistical office because uh, we have uh, much larger samples uh, than uh, you will have in your own research. It's one point. Um, data collections of the statistical office are uh, in so about 90% uh, uh, harmonized with uh, uh, European statistics. So if you have access to Hungarian data, you can compare uh, to European data and to any other country's uh, data. And um, 
Uh, this was the starting point uh, to increase the researches uh, in the research uh, center. But it was not the demand of the researchers, it was uh, the initiative of, of the statistical office. Uh, uh, I visited uh, every uh, Hungarian univer bigger university on the countryside and uh, I organized uh, I don't know how much uh, 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 seminars and uh, and uh, uh, shows in uh, Budapest for uh, uh, researchers uh, to uh, appetize uh, them with uh, statistical data. And uh, still uh, one uh, remark that uh, uh, okay, uh, we can uh, chewing this gum. Uh, for a long time, uh, data protection and so on and so on, and uh, how to deal with microdata and how not to deal with uh, microdata. But uh, uh, the use of microdata is there. We entered into the phase of algorithmic society. Big IT firms like Facebook, Google, and so on and so on, and uh, media platforms are using uh, very professionally uh, uh, microdata for making profit. We are uh, a part of the public administration and uh, researchers uh, are somewhere in between, but uh, probably closer to public administration. We are responsible for public decisions, for evidence-based uh, uh, decision-making. This is our responsibility. We see what is on in the world. We have to convince our partners, the decision-makers, researchers, uh, to join and to make joint efforts uh, to keep up uh, with uh, big IT firms and, and, and so on. Uh, this is the, the main question of, uh, of the present. So uh, I uh, couldn't mention a more relevant question today as to uh, use and how to regulate and uh, how to access the microdata and how to regulate uh, the access to microdata. And this is uh, just an example. As I, as I told you, we are grass on the battlefield. Okay, but we have to do our own job uh, in this game. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to add? Uh, or only, only a few remarks. I, I think it was very inspiring and uh, also the discussion and the uh, uh, arguments which you mentioned, I think, are very relevant. Yes, yes, I... I, I, I uh, I understand that. So, yeah, it's really a question for the future how to how to work with that. Yeah, how to deal with that. Yes. Good Thank to you. hear. Uh, and now the, you have a chance to to ask any of us or other comments or thoughts. Uh, please don't uh, hesitate. Yes, over there, please. Can you introduce yourselves first, please, so everybody knows. Hi, thank you for this very useful event and very useful to see the uh, see that coming from Hungary. Sorry, my name is Petr Bochal. I run the evaluation unit at the Ministry of Regional Development here. Um, and my question is quite pertinent to my position, which is, how do you handle the distinction between research and policy evaluation? Is that, do you also have that set somewhere in law? Does it not matter? Have you uh, had to deal with this in some way? So wh whom do you... Whom do you admit to your safe room? Whom do you not? And how do you determine who the right person is? Uh, good question. But uh, I think that this differentiation uh, between a research project and a evaluation project is uh, not our job. Uh, even uh, 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 experts of a ministry could make a research in the safe center of the statistical office to evaluate uh, the uh, p policy on education or healthcare or uh, labor market or uh, anything. But uh, as far as uh, researchers of the academy uh, do the, this job, it's uh, still, it's even better because it's uh, uh, independent, uh, you know, and, uh, not biased. So uh, I, this is why I cannot make a real uh, uh, difference between these uh, two goals uh, of, of a research project. So if, okay. if I may add, actually I'm interested in the same question. If I rephrase uh, uh, 
Uh, did you get a request for access from a say, private consultancy company to run evaluation project on the, pro on the data and you allow or you would not grant the request? Good question uh, as well. So Safe Center is uh, basically uh, for researchers and research institutions and uh, universities. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, there's a, a very uh, detailed uh, evaluation process, uh, how to get uh, access uh, uh, to the uh, Safe Center. And uh, it's for statistical and research purposes. Uh, a private company, uh, I'm not sure that uh, they are interested uh, in statistical uh, researches, they are interested uh, in to uh, uh, get uh, informed uh, about another uh, private firm, and Safe Center is not for this uh, purpose. So this is dedicated for uh, uh, research institutions and uh, researches. Uh, I think there is a, there is a, there are extremes of course on both sides and there is some middle ground. Uh, I think what, what could be called policy research is a credible research field and there is a lot of room for uh, researching policies. So in that sense, uh, uh, maybe the private company would not be uh, welcome, but uh, a researcher from university doing policy research is probably credible. Yeah. Uh, also in uh, in uh, under the Czech actually current Czech law because as soon as research uh, could be a policy then it's probably fine uh, in, in that sense. But uh, but it's a tricky issue. Yes. It's yeah. not easy to distinguish because the borderline is very yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is really research and what what is the uh, commercial purpose already? Yeah, it's not easy. I agree, and that's that's why I bring it up because I can see immediately that that's. That's a sensitive issue that uh, will uh, surface at some point. Yes, please. Um. Daniel Munich from IDEA. Um, my feeling is that uh, if there is a will on important sites to go on according to Hungarian or European uh, direction, the money will become the major issue. Uh, meaning who will make the major initial investment and who will contribute to the running f funding. So my question is whether one can imagine that EU funds, whether EU funds uh, could be potentially used as kind of development because it's a great deal of development, right? Moving the country forward. And second, whether uh, the contribution to running fund should come from institutions like Ministry of Education or Academy of Sciences. <coughs> I know, you know, in sciences, uh, we, we invest a lot in uh, infrastructure, while in social sciences, usually we invest in people and data. So this might be natural kind of, um, not investment, but simply the coverage of operational um, costs from the side of academy and Ministry of Labor, uh, Ministry of Schooling. So do you have some opinion on this, uh, how it works? Uh, the, money problem in Hungary. You said that it's actually profitable now, or did um, I get it right? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'd like to uh, make a very relaxing feeling for uh, Mr. Rojicek, <laughs> because uh, I have to tell you that uh, the absolute majority of the investment in terms of money, it was made by the academy. Uh, the investment in knowledge and human resources it was made by the statistical office but uh, uh, i do not want to go into uh, very deep details it's an uh, other uh, conference or seminar but uh, the uh, work uh, of statistical office is changing as well so just imagine that 10 years ago so about 60 uh, percent of the colleagues uh, worked as a data uh, uh, computer co compu with the data computing. Uh, no, this uh, kind of job uh, is a way nobody uh, does this kind of job. So we have uh, 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 a quite uh, big uh, resource, human resource and labor resource, to answer uh, the new challenges. Uh, and uh, so we. Uh, in fact, uh, we invested into the remote access uh, opportunity. 
uh, and the cost of this remote uh, access uh, is so about uh, five million forints. Uh, you know, the paint, painting the walls uh, to put uh, new chairs in, and uh, uh, two computers and uh, screens and uh, keyboards. And so it's uh, not a real uh, big cost. Uh, the science building, the safe center in the science building of the academy. Uh, it's a huge investment. Uh, it's, uh, I really don't know how much they invested, but uh, it's really a lot. But uh, they uh, applied for, for uh, money. That, uh, this, is need, uh, this is not from their uh, yearly budget. So it's an extra money. They invested into the future uh, with this uh, investment. So statistical office uh, didn't have to uh, invest in terms of money uh, too much. And there could be subscription fees. I know that in Sweden, the Lund University was paying quite hefty, I think, amount of money to statistics Sweden to run uh, the remote access. So uh, if I can imagine the investment cost, of course, that's one question, and then the running cost, it's another one. But if you, if you can imagine, I can have sciences and Sharos University and Masaryk University coming together, um, throwing I mean, a few millions together for this kind of infrastructure shouldn't be a big issue if it's considered to be a strategic uh, decision. Uh, uh, we also asked, uh, I mentioned the, the survey uh, among the <coughs> academic institutions, we also asked if there is possible contribution, contribution from this institution concerning, of course, some uh, methodological and uh, uh, other, but also financial contribution, and then uh, nobody promised. <laughs> but of course, uh, it was uh, in the stage that there was uh, on the table there were no concrete project. Yeah, so there was only 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 some some kind of uh, some kind of uh, really uh, a very preliminary. Uh, um, um, interest uh, uh, about that, uh, uh, but uh, <clears throat> generally, I, I think there is always uh, there are always various solution uh, of financing. There could be some European projects. There could be some uh, some um, a contribution from from other institutions uh, uh, it's not always easy to manage that because uh, as we are the budgetary institutions it's always problem uh, uh, more complicated than for example in private sector or in, in in academic institutions and uh, uh, one, <laughs> one problem is also that if we collect some fees uh, for for uh, from the researchers so this is not our income yeah? we, we only transfer the money to to the state budget so it, it's a problem yeah. that we cannot <laughs> cover cover the cost by by the income so uh, it's always uh, it, it's not big motivation for mm. us <laughs> to to provide the data uh, mm. but uh, yeah there are always always some some solutions mm. how to yeah how to how, how, how to deal with it yes please Yes. So I'm sorry. Um, uh, I have to repeat that uh, to get access to data today is equal to get access to knowledge. So uh, who cares? A, a few millions. It's the the game uh, goes on a much bigger field. So we have to see uh, what is on uh, on uh, around us. This is why we are statisticians because. <laughs> We have to report about the reality, and uh, if we are sensible, uh, what's the reality like? We have to react. Uh, this and to use of microdata is a reaction on the uh, very recent uh, 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 processes in the world around us. Yes. Hello, my name is uh, Andrzej Dvoleti and I come from the University of Economics in Prague and um, we deal with uh, impact evaluation quite a lot. And uh, my question is uh, regarding or related to the sustainability of uh, the current state of uh, um, availability of the microdata. Because there is a, we are all living in a competitive world and there are companies who are trying to provide us with a I would say sometimes better data that can be accessed uh, for a quite a fast uh, time period without any 
I need to spend a couple of months uh, with uh, uh, papers to get a microdata from the statistical office. And even if we get it, we have to pay. So my question is uh, uh, regard related to the sustainability of the statistical office. How do you plan to respond to this uh, increasing competition? Do you think that uh, the statistical office can even lose its uh, monopoly that is up to date uh, in the Czech Republic? Uh, yes, of course. So, yeah, statistical offices are in the competition uh, nowadays uh, because uh, um, a lot of institutions provide some data. There are always data on the internet and uh, uh, social uh, social networks and so on. Uh, I think the uh, advantage of statistical offices is that they can provide some uh, some. Uh, 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 let's say guarantee of quality of the data because they are official data, they are based on some methodology. Of course, they are not so flexible as other providers of data. Uh, it's a kind of compromise uh, always, but generally I agree that uh, we need to keep keep uh, that we need to keep the pace with uh, uh, with uh, with with the world which is changing. Yes, of course and. It's big discussion also in the uh, in the in the statistical world. I would I would if my uh, my uh, if I may add uh, I think at some level there is a competition, but on the other hand, statistical office has so much resource accumulated, a unique that uh, the competition is really for in some segments and on surface, but. Uh, just in my field, r and data, uh, even if you try to collect it now, you might collect some, right? But you will never collect now data that is 10 years old. And you need that to estimate any kind of impact, right? So Statistical Office really has a unique data that nobody will never, ever be able to collect again, right? So it's absolutely unique source. That there's no... In some segments, yes, there's competition. There's, you know, big uh, balance sheets, income statements, data sets now, but, uh, but for... <laughs> For many kind of analysis, uh, it actually can be replaced by anything else, in that sense. Um, if I may just briefly respond. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. It was just a call for a statistical office to perhaps uh, wake up and to become more friendly towards the academia. And uh, with all respect, uh, if we have an impact evaluation, if we have an impact evaluation to be done in a couple of months, then we have to pay for the commercial data and to come up with something rather than with nothing. And, um, you know, we are, if we want to have uh, evidence-driven policies, then, you know, we need to respond on a time. So just I, a brief I don't comment. Know concrete, I don't know your concrete uh, case. Uh, because I think generally we are friendly to academic institutions. <laughs> I don't know. In your case, maybe I uh, really I don't know. We have we have time for. I think one I would not comment on that. We have time for one more question. In, in the meantime, I would add actually on on the chicken and egg problem because I think in the Czech Republic it has another level. Which is that uh, uh, social sciences uh, devastated by the uh, 40 years of communism, they have n not really recovered. And the overall quality of social sciences is really uh, at a level which is not uh, acceptable and that needs to improve. And uh, you, you, can have a, uh, you can look at this from two sides. Uh, first is there's no need for a statistical microdata room because the social sciences are so bad that there's no demand. But you can also look at it from the different perspective that there is a need for the microdata statistical room. So the social scientists actually have not have excuses not to develop because there is no data, right? So it's 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 revolves you know simultaneously and uh, for, for some researchers, actually, the, the, the access of, to the data can be the reason to stay in the Czech Republic, not move abroad, right? And for me personally, um, if I have nothing to work with in terms of micro data here, and uh, you know, I have the job offer from Sweden and I see the infrastructure there, it's one more item on the pro, cons, staying, leaving. You know, uh, 
Um, so it, it's quite complex, actually. So I would, uh, the fact that social sciences are so low now, um, uh, I understand, but we need to maybe look in a, in a five, 10 years perspective where we want to get rather than, uh, you know, be locked in, in the current uh, marasm and um, like throw up hands in the air and say that, you know, nothing to do. Yeah. But I see the risk. I see the risk that I will be the only one coming there for the <laughs> next first three years. Yeah. <laughs> but. Okay. If you uh, guarantee me <laughs> that there would be enough researchers, <laughs> we can talk. Yeah, there's some another well. one coming. Another one. Going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, three, three. So we beat Hungary already. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we are right on time. Uh, so let me invite you for uh, for a coffee and a small refreshment, and uh, let's continue with the debate. Uh, it's right here, over there. So thank you, thank you for coming.